Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. Today, we're having a little bit of discussion, and I'm joined by... Hi, I'm Marco, I'm a creative director at Zero Gravity, and uh, one of the persons behind the idea of Hellion. And uh, I'm Milo Zhukovic, game designer and story writer, also behind Hellion. So between them, they have an extreme amount of experience in building a space game. And not any sort of space game, this is Helion. This is a very complex type simulator that I've played and you guys do an extremely good job on simulating a lot of aspects. But today we're just going to get to the nitty gritty parts of what have been the challenges of both building that game. But on top of that, what are your favorite parts about building a space game? So what has been the biggest challenge you guys, first of all? Uh, well, at first it's, uh, it's of course, because, because it's the multiplayer game. It's uh, one of the uh, aspects that we have to uh, cover. And uh, the whole size of the solar system that we have to, uh, we have to put in the game to, to get the, the whole experience of traveling between planets. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I think the most difficult challenge was the the actual technical stuff behind uh, uh, moving inside the ship and moving the ship through the space, you know, so you have ships uh, outside of your ship that are actually moving and you going, uh, you walking through your ship and it's it's a bit of, a, you know, technical Sounds issues. Sounds very to, complicated. To, to, yeah, yeah, it, it is. And that's the, the thing that uh, we had to, uh, we had an idea how to do it and uh, when we saw how it actually implements it it just became more difficult uh, with each step but uh, i think we're now at the phase that we're handling pretty, pretty well uh zg you got a challenge that it was when you came to developing it hey can you repeat that i didn't hear that last oh, part, have sorry. you got a challenge what was your biggest challenge what did you feel the biggest challenge was when it came to developing uh, well, that would be reconciling with uh, other people in the company. You see, Marco here, he's uh, kind of like a realist and I'm a dreamer. So um tends to work out pretty well, but uh, usually we get into a conflict about some ideas. But uh, in this case, uh, probably one of the biggest challenges uh, we've had, uh, at least from my perspective, would be how to integrate uh, everything we have in the game. Uh, with this realistic feel that we wanted to have. So this is a fine line that we have to walk constantly between uh, gameplay and immersion. And uh, on occasion, it happens that we slightly cross either to one or the other side, but balancing uh, various game features to follow this fine line is probably one of the hardest things that we have to deal, which are not directly tied, say, to the technical difficulties that we always have with the game. Well, I guess it's quite a difficult thing balancing both, you know, realism and the fact is because you don't have a split sort of audience at one sort of point as well. I mean, some people are going to favor realism, but other people are going to try to favor um, the less realistic features that feel like they draw you into the game. But moving on to my next sort of question or discussion point is what was one feature that you, fe you kind of felt you needed right from the beginning, something that you worked really hard to integrate in? Well, it's of course the the zero g movement and the uh, and that uh, ability to uh, board other ships to actually move from from the ship to ship without uh, any loading or just uh, you know just seamless uh, transitions and uh, that was the the key that had to happen. So you really like the the floating around aspect. I have to say though, when you enter in your game from a zero g sort of area into a standard area, it's it's very sort of. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Disorientating like it would be yeah, if you were yeah. in that. And I just, I really do appreciate that. I think it's really nice, the sort of transition. Uh, we had, we had a, a, also the the, uh, pre the pressure as a, as a game mechanics, uh, where you actually mm -hmm. have to pressurize your, your uh, like a room or module wherever you are. And uh, the, we had a, a nice feedback from people when, when they, when they first left the, uh, opened the the door to, to outer space and they went it out. That was the one of the features that, uh, even though it's not something that's uh, you know familiar for players, you don't have you, you in every other game you have a standard thing. You have a you have an air pressure and you don't care about it. Here you have to actually worry about it. And uh, when you throw you out of space, it's really really disorienting. Oh, it's scary. But that. I think 
think uh, uh, that was something that uh, I mean that was something that we wanted to achieve. So ZG, what was your feature that you felt just had to be added, like you couldn't live without it? Well, um, probably for me that would be uh, that would kind of continue with what uh, Mark was talking in this. In this case, it would be the full orbital mechanics and the uh, Newtonian physics. And as I said once more, you know, this is that fine line between immersion realism and uh, gameplay. Uh, we had a lot of problems, you know, with implementing it fully, but once we handled it, and once we saw those planets, moons, ships, and everything um, in uh, orbits and following all the laws of physics, you know, it did make piloting, you know, and navigating through that world a lot more difficult compared to every other game. However, it does add something that we just don't believe that Hellion would, wouldn't simply wouldn't be the same game without it. You know, just the idea, you know, that you know that everything is constantly in motion, you know, and that nothing is really static is something that really can give you the chills especially when you find yourself you know floating in space you know outside of your spaceship and you look at the planet below it just creates this feeling you know of real space around you uh, it does it does give us uh, still some you know difficulties with you know game design to make uh, to enable for the new players to actually uh, get the grasp of uh, how it That's works what I was just about to say uh, and uh, so it's um, how do you want the players to learn the game? Do you want there to be a steep wall learning curve so they have to start learning little bits at a time, even like go through a training sort of routine? Or do you want it to be a slow sort of steep slope that gains momentum as they learn more features as they venture further out? Well, uh, our goal here would be to slightly, let's say, ease the curve for new players. As you said, put it into small chunks that they need to learn at a time but uh, our goal here would be to prepare them for what Hallion has to offer in full uh, to teach them the core mechanics and what is actually different about Hellion because even the basic most basic concept of walking through a door you know opening a door or walking or moving is different simply because a lot of people never actually had an experience with um, realistic space mechanics in any other game um, not to say in the real world. So this is probably one of the largest challenges, but we are looking to make that uh, learning curve a little less steep than it is now. Yeah, because I've noticed at the moment it is a steep curve, but when you do get the hang of things, you, you just it just seems to work. Everything flows naturally. You move from one ship, you learn how the airlocks work. I mean, I remember for the first time I started playing just finding the airlock panel to open it up and then realizing there's this little panel behind this switch, and I just love... The level of detail that you've gone in, you know, with the switches and panels. Um, is that something you're going to continue even further? Like have even more little switches and dials that do even fancier gadgetry sort of features? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, the, if you if you look at uh, uh, every aspect of, of the game, uh, is consisted of uh, some sort of system that does something, and you have uh, almost like uh, full control o over it. Almost like the, our, our developer. Ha the developers have so you, you can you know pressurize the room depressurize the room you can open the door you can lock the door you can force open the door and just and we were just talking about the simple room uh, as an airlock if you look at the life support system or the uh, power supply system it goes even deeper into the details yeah. well what, what i also really do like is how you guys like you don't if someone makes a mistake you punish them for it uh, say for instance I'm docking a module and I come in too fast or I move or overcorrect a little bit much I'm really punished for doing that and I, I like how realistic it is you know in that nature have you got anything to like add on that one move it like punishing well, players and so well uh, uh, I think maybe uh, it's, 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 uh, it's how the, the game is actually you know uh, thought of um, it's not something that we really really want we don't want to punish the people who, who I mean for, for, for me, the docking should be pretty simple, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, because we have the full uh, Newtonian physics, it's not that easy for you know new players who never had a uh, experience like that. So uh, we're we're actually trying to maybe maybe um, add something that will uh, be uh, a mechanic that will uh, make it easier. For new players, but still have the uh, to you know to keep that realistic tone that uh, we want to have. So here's a bit of an out there question: Who came up with the basketball idea in the back of the ship? 
uh, actually actually that came from the from the community uh there was a a, a video uh not, not i cannot remember the, the name of the uh, person but um they were they were uh, they were tossing some resource injectors into the box as well they were warping because they didn't have anything else to do so yeah, we have we have a long warp time so we we decided to put uh, it was an easy thing to do because we have all we had all the mechanics uh, all the background uh, stuff to, to we just made a ball and basket and we, we put in the game so it was pretty much easy to do and something that will keep you occupied while you know during the long warps it's, it's very simple very effective um what do you plan on further doing with locks and how ships are locked and hacked and so on do you plan on what you, what give us some of your information and thoughts on that sort of thing well, uh, we are definitely looking into how security works in Hellion. The uh, current mechanic we implemented uh, is something of a placeholder at this point. We are working on a full security system that will allow players to properly customize the security of their own base, You know, allow them to lock the doors, which they want, uh, mm -hmm. allow access to different consoles and other things, maybe even allow ships You know, to, to give players the ability to restrict who can dock and come and go from their stations uh, there is a lot of work ahead of us uh, regarding the security system and also how the turrets function and how generally base defenses uh, are going to work so yes in general there's a lot of work ahead of us and we are working on it we get a lot of feedback from the players uh, uh, it's when they put a lot of a hard you know a lot of hard work into making a base and mm -hmm. gathering all the stuff you don't want want it to be you know raided like next morning <laughs> so uh, i mean uh, the realistic approach in the game allow, allows that i mean uh, the, the the base is there on the server when you're not playing and so anybody can get and uh, loot it so we want to keep that but we want to add the options for the players to uh, make a proper defense and they so they feel that it's much much safer to uh, you know keep their stuff uh, one thing here, uh, just want to add, uh, the whole idea of what we're working on uh, with the security system is to make raiding, uh, defending from raiders, as interesting for the person who is constructing his base and his security system as it would be interesting for a looter or a raider to actually assault that base and raid it, to make it kind of an equivalent experience uh, that it requires the same amount of effort you put in to build a base as it would take someone to raid it or loot it when you're offline, basically. So something in the terms you could even build a trap base, lower players into the death. Yeah, yeah, that would be possible with that kind of system, yeah. So hopefully you've enjoyed our brief discussion on a number of different space-related topics and covering a bit of Helion and its development itself. So for your chance to win a copy of Helion, we've got two questions. What sci-fi show and what character said, now get the hell out of our galaxy, both of you? And for question two? Uh, what's the name of the NASA space probe orbiting Jupiter? So the way that you can win a copy is simple. Uh, put the answer to either both or one of the questions in the comments below and I will pick a random. Now make sure you are subscribed to the channel and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.